today's guest is a uh, is a really really um, really amazing uh, talent, a visionary, some would say, uh, and he has a new album that's coming out called Catch Twenty Two. Uh, Nightheart, why don't you mic up and cam up and let's get into this. Uh, I hope you're done eating your pizza rolls. Uh, <laughs> he was on earlier. He was eating his pizza rolls. All right, everybody, it's put right. your na- put your hands together for today's guest, motherfucking the oh shit, hold up, the night hole. There he is. There he is. Boom. Lots of love, lots of love. There he is. There he is. Oh shit. What are we doing? All right. I'm turning off the uh, the alerts and stuff. Oh, let me. I'm killing the. I'm killing the animated emote wall too, guys. Bro. No, nothing personal. You know, I love I love y'all, but we, we can't have that emo shit flying around <laughs> while we're trying to have a conversation. Nightheart, welcome back, my friend. It's been a while. Thank you. I'm grateful to be here, man. I appreciate you having me. Of course, of course. You've always been a great guest on the show. I think the last time you were on the show, what was that like? Um, was that like after like the Toledo protest, like the Toledo BLM yep. protest? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> wow, a lot has uh, changed since then, hasn't it? <laughs> mm-hmm. the, yeah, man. It's been some crazy times. Whoa, the <laughs> world is wild right now, man. So, so tell me what mm. you've been up to, man. How, you, what, what, what you been doing? Man, I'm trying to live my best life, man. I see that you always you always got some good content going, man. I got I gotta really say, uh, the, like I really enjoy the quality of your content. I really like your videos. You always put a lot of effort into that. What it, it um, because you know you could see so you see some people putting out videos. It looks like it was shot on like an iPhone four. You know what I mean? And it's just like yeah, we're doing. It. And, and you know. It, rappers in particular and and i don't want to cornerstone you into just rapping because your your latest stuff is really cool man and, and you're kind of taking the next step in the evolution of the night heart uh but like uh you know is that a conscious thing where you're like i want it to be like the best looking content i mean what it what what all goes into your videos and stuff when you're when you're putting this stuff together thing is just imagination creativity like i want my ideas to hold on buddy we we, you hold on nightheart we lost some volume on you what happened bud uh can you hear me i can hear you but it's like you dropped down like so many decibels i don't know what happened Hmm. let me see something real quick should i project louder um well you could but it's still like very um very it's like it's something muffled ah. maybe uh uh you, maybe check in your um hey what is up this kid is awesome toledo stand up i've always been a fan what's up i'm goalie gend 419 where, where, uh, I don't know what's going on, buddy. Uh, welcome in, man. I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong because I, I read English good as well as speak English good. Uh, so, so wait a second. I wonder if it's because you're Go Legend. Oh, Go Legend! <laughs> Goal League. Goal. Holy shit. I am just a, a turd ball here. Uh, okay, so maybe okay. He he muted himself. So maybe uh, Nightheart, check your. Can you hear me now? Oh, there he is. There he is. Is it better? Yeah, it's a lot better. Excellent, excellent. What'd you do? I was just messing with my uh, audio control, seeing where it was coming from. Yeah. Look at this guy. This guy. He has. He's on it. He's on it. <laughs> you know, I forget the youth is is on this shit, man. I forget <laughs> the youth knows what they're doing with technology. Sometimes I'm dealing with older cats who are like, what is this? What's happening? I don't know. Please. <laughs> man. So I I, I um I was just commenting on your on your content and your and videos and stuff. What goes yeah. into like when you when you're putting these videos together, what goes into that? 
So I try to approach it with uh, two different perspectives. You know, I'm an artist and I'm a creative. So I just want my ideas to be well translated and I want it to stand out and be unique in its own right. But then on the other hand, I like to have a competitive edge because I understand that in this industry, you've got to push yourself and, and also know your audience and who else is in your lane and stuff. So even though, you know, I, I love my peers and a lot of the artists who I work alongside, but also that I just see general um, out in the industry doing their thing. Um, I still want my stuff to be able to compete and, and stand the test of time. So um, making it as original and unique as possible, I feel like just increases the longevity. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. No, I, I like that you said you got this competitive edge and uh, because cause there is a lot of uh, there's a lot of a lot of people have a lot of access to uh, <clears throat> cameras and things have become to that point where it's affordable now. Like it used to be yeah. you had to go and, you know, pay all this money to 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 get someone to come out and shoot. And now it's like if you have a homie with a nice camera and, and like some editing software, you can like put some shit together and make it and make it pop. Absolutely. Yeah. What? So, are you still working with? Uh, do you work with the same videographer? Um, I've worked with a couple different videographers currently right now. Um, shout out the All Vision, shout out Doughboy Productions, shout out Poetic Python, shout out Young Mo Films. Um, I've been working alongside a lot of them. You know, they all have different visions, kind of different ideas and different energies when it comes to helping me create vi videos. So, um, it honestly all depends on what, what I'm working on. Sometimes they collab together and they do videos for me. So, um, it really depends on what the video is because I know some are visual effects heavy. Some are very cinematic with the way they shoot, you know? And so I like to kind of curate and figure out, okay, I know this guy's really good at this. So I'm going to tag him in for this kind of project. Yeah, man, that's uh that's pretty wise, man. Cause that's like a, that's like a sign of a good leader of good leadership. It's like knowing who has a strengths and who has, you know, who has what strengths and who does what and how it put together. It's like putting together a band, you know. It's like if you need a band that uh, that you know, I need a I need a three piece combo, right, to play a jazz gig. Okay, yeah. I know I know this cat could do it. I know this cat could do it. And if he can't do it, I know this dude could do it. Uh, but you don't want to bring in some like rock drummer, you know, like who's if right. it's a jazz yeah. gig, you're not trying to bring in some rock drummer. He's just gonna be slamming away and double pedal. Do, 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 do. Uh, but, but no, Absolutely. that, that, that's, uh, that makes a lot of sense, man. I've always thought that you've had this sort of forward looking way of thinking because I mean, again, I, and I'm not trying to harp on your youth because, you know, like, uh, but, uh, you it's could, better, you, you, but, but like you could tell even from the first time we talked like that, you've always had this, um, you know, the, you, you have a mind older than your numerical number of years you've been on earth, you know what I mean? So like. I don't know. Is that how you've always sort of thought? Have you always sort of thought it more maturely? I mean, that's what other people have told me. You know, from my perspective, it's always just been like the way I've thought. And mm -hmm. then I've expressed my ideas to other people. And they're like, wow, like for your age, you're really like, and I'm like, what does that even mean? You know, I didn't <laughs> even understand what that meant until I got older yeah. and I started seeing youth. And I'm like, holy holy they're not <laughs> yeah I, I see the difference for sure and not to say like i'm the most intelligent most smartest guy but like i try to stay progressive and you know continue especially in the creative range like i'm always in ideas i'm always trying to elevate an idea help an artist with something just you know be involved in it and so um i don't know bro no no it, it's funny that you say like and and I feel like this goes through generation after generation. It's like the 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 next generation or the older generation always looks down at the other generation, like what is even happening here? And and I gotta admit, like I I kind of live in that world a little bit, where I'm just like I don't even know what's happening. You know, like if it wasn't for TikTok, I feel like I wouldn't have any can TikTok and my niece who's in who's in high school. Like if I didn't have that, like I, I feel like I'd be completely disconnected from from the the la this new generation of people and, and youngins. Uh what about this new remember. generation uh or at least your generation, what about them makes you shake your head and be like, oh I don't know what's up with that. All right. 
so it's to me it's like the social disconnect you know it's it's um the validation through like social media being the affirmation of whether someone is worth spending time with messaging hanging out with you know it's like you see someone with like ten thousand followers let's say you meet someone right mm-hmm. you don't know they have a popping social media presence and then you find out oh they've got thousands of followers it automatically in your mind makes them more elevated because on this app they have more numbers, you know? Yeah. And so to me, it, it, it's so weird because, you know, it, it blocks people just having normal conversations with people and interacting with people on a personal basis because it's not, none of it's personal anymore. It's all impersonal and DM me and all this shit. And I don't know, man, I understand the importance of social media being a part of the human contact on certain levels but there's it, it's a crutch on so many levels and i feel like my generation and also the younger generation are going to be more handicapped by the need to contact and reach people just through the internet you know yeah yeah i know you're you're right and and bomb on what jesus say but then they spend half their time with the phone in their face not talking to other people around the world yeah and i think that exactly. uh, uh, I think that that uh, connects with what you just said is that uh, and, and you do see that and you do see that sort of in this the the newer generation fe- I feel like mental health is more of a struggle uh, for Absolutely. for this next generation where you you do see younger kids and I mean this is this is you know I, I read this book by Jonathan Haidt and he was talking about how there's a direct correlation between Facebook the rise of Facebook and social media and the rise of suicide among young mm. young people uh, especially young women and mm. so it's like it, so to me that says something now it's a correlation that doesn't mean that it's what's causing it but it does right. seem like because people are so like you said are reliant and and they're on this crutch uh, where, where, you know, you, you don't have to make eye contact anymore. You can just, you know, you don't have to be social. You could be hanging out on a, on a platform like this, like Twitch, or you could be yeah. hanging out, you know, talking on Instagram or, or TikTok live, whatever it is, there's always sort of this barrier between you and the other person. And it, it does seem like there is some weird disconnect that yeah. people are, are suffering from. Whereas, you know, like I'm, I'm, a, I'm of a generation where I remember there was no Internet. There was <laughs> there was rotary phones and and, you know, answering machines. And uh, I used to just run around my neighborhood and, and get into trouble with other kids, uh, kids yeah. older than me. But like still, <laughs> I was out there fucking out in the world. And, there, Same, and it wasn't it wasn't a, a, a uh, there wasn't a, a place for me to just sort of sit in my own little world and, and you mm-hmm. know, get lost in it. Uh, yeah. I was out and about just running the streets like a wild person. So <laughs> it, it is it, it is a weird it is weird to see kids sort of um, having these these sort of these mental breakdowns so young mm. and having these mental issues, mental health issues um at such a young age and it's very sad man i mean you know like especially when you look at like you know like that kid down in texas who just went up there and and shot those young kids like that kid you know that i guarantee that fucking loser was on the internet you know fucking <laughs> just yeah. getting radicalized or whatever it was he was doing yeah. on the wrong reddit forums <laughs> wrong reddit forums son and 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 he took that out on you know on the world because I, I who knows what his reason was and who honestly cares what what matters is that he he did that shit I mean yeah, I don't sorry. I mean I, I don't know like you know I don't want to harp on it too much but how does you know how does that affect you when you see these sort of incidents happen how does that affect you and how does it relate to your art well, the first thing I try to do is like disconnect emotionally from it. And I know that sounds harsh, mm-hmm. but it because I'm such an empath and so emotional, I like I'll take it in, but damn, I kinda have to create those barriers so I don't let mm-hmm. it like take me down the reality and the fear allow it to come too close, you know, because even though it is a reality and it's an unfortunate reality, um, I can't allow it to be absorbed into my reality too deeply that I'm taken out by it because I'm I feel deeply about that stuff and I try to allow it to mostly translate in my art through my emotions um and 
you know, I try not to be too political about the things I commentate in my music, but I do try to encapsulate the themes going on around the world in my music because people are going to experience it who have different lives, who have completely different perspectives on reality. And even though I'm sharing a glimpse into mine, it would be selfish to not also try to encapsulate glimpses of theirs as well. So um, I haven't necessarily mentioned anything to that degree in my music, right. but you know, the death of what that feels like, I feel like people can relate to with them on music, if that makes sense. No, it does. It does. And and I think that that's like, you know, you find that in stand up com comedy too, where. Uh, I love it. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, where they make it more about, there's a lot of comics who make it more about themselves. And where where the, and so much they're just commenting on themselves and how mm. they're reflecting the world back, and right. and it sort of it, it sort of opens that uh, that that door to um, you know to be making this original content that's not mm. that's not about any particular thing other than how they're feeling about what's around them, and and right. I, I dig that shit. You know, there's a lot mm -hmm. of comics that that I dig that just sort of mm. you know. And it could be a lot of self-deprecation or it could be a lot of, uh, you know, whatever the situation is. I, I, I really dig that stuff. And it allows people to sort of stay original as well. And what's up, Morby? Welcome in. Welcome in. Uh, I love how this is going. All right. Yeah, Morby, we're already down the rabbit hole. Nobody ever has. <laughs> Bonnie said nobody ever had photographic evidence of their wild behavior. <laughs> yeah, that is for sure. Uh, my God, it, are you are you protective of when you're like when you're hanging out with your people? Are you protective when uh, if if they're like filming and stuff? Do you do you like it when people are just filming you when you're trying to like hang out with the homies and stuff? I mean, I I, I mean I've seen some of your posts, but you keep it very business. Yeah, I, I I like my boundaries and my especially my personal space. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like the even though Jelani and Nightheart are completely the same person. You know. <laughs> the way people perceive me and personify me are different. So you've got certain people who, when they look at me, they only see the night heart. And then you've got people who look at me and see Jelani, you know? And so there's certain times when I'm just like, in, in my personal mode, vibe and chilling, and people want to turn up and make it something that it's not, <laughs> and I have to create those boundaries. But yeah, this ain't it. You know, if it was a video <laughs> shoot, photo shoot, we had a show, you know, you see me popping out, you know, that's a different story. But don't catch me when I'm vibing. I've had a lot of situations, even in public, like mm. when people approach me, like, aren't you Nightheart? And I'm like, I mean, like, I appreciate it. And I'm grateful for people who know who I am to certain degrees, but like, also, my privacy and boundaries are need to be respected, too. So I try to keep it. If you are posting like interpersonal shit, it's because you're a part of my interpersonal group. Mm. But like, I don't like people all up in my business and recording me and filming me that I've been there before, before I before my I built my my skin up. And I'm like, yeah, I, I got thicker skin. I don't need to stay a little bit further away. <laughs> No oh, man, I feel that. I feel that. Like that's the problem, though. Like with me, I before I think before um, I knew what social media was, and as someone who's been using social media since fucking MySpace, you know, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, there is so much shit out there of me, like dry humping dogs and like fucking just wild now using stupid language online, just. Be um, making comments. I I just just if people wanted to dig, they'll find it, man. They'll find yeah. it. And I, I feel like I feel like if you're coming into this world, uh into the social media world, you know, like people might be a little bit more um or people who grew up with it, I should say, uh probably have a little bit more uh, well, people who use it responsibly, that is. Uh, <laughs> because people are always getting caught up on social media still. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yeah. But like, but but like, I, I really do like how you sort of have that purely business uh, mentality when you're going into, uh, when you're going, w when you're utilizing uh, social media. It's more of a tool for you, and not so much as like, yeah. look at me. This is every, you know, I'm over yeah. here. I'm, you know, I'm getting drunk with the homies. I'm smoking over here. You know, what I mean, like, 
you you use it very strategically um, even then though bro like i've got to take my breaks and yeah. like like i deleted instagram facebook and tiktok for a while because <laughs> like i felt like my brain was just getting like, i was seeing so many faces and hashtags and at this name and all of this just flooded my brain and i'm just like yo this is too much static information like i yeah. don't i don't need to know what that guy's face looks like from that one dude's account in kansas when i just i don't need all of this i don't need to know like what hashtag i need to be recent oh, i just it's, it's a lot you know yeah. and on a business side i love doing it but mm. on the personal side i'd be like yo I'm going to take a moment, yeah. you know, I'm going to breathe because once I get on the train, it's networking, it's posting, it's keeping up with all this stuff. And social media, like you said, becomes a tool, yeah. but it also becomes like a side job and yeah. marketing and all this other shit. It's like, yo, exhausting. And then I do have family and friends who are on my social medias and they're like, yo, you never post anything about like, like your personal anything. And I'm like, yeah because I'm running rapid right now. I've got like three shows. I got two video shoots. I got this, 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 like I've got to post about it. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and that, as you should, I mean, like if you're an artist out there utilizing social media is, is just a huge part of it. Um, mm. Have you heard like, there's like this, it's not, I guess it's not that new, but it, it's, it's, uh, I've had, uh, I've had some friends that I've seen online who are getting signed to maybe bigger labels, you know, like indie mm -hmm. bigger labels that are like subsidiaries of like Sony or something. And right. they're sort of, their the label is sort of forcing them to, uh, forcing is bad word, but like they're encouraging them to use more social media and, and mm -hmm. to the point where they're saying, we're not going to release this song until you, or, or we're not going to release your album until you can get a viral video with your song. Yo. Have you heard that yet? Yeah. I, I haven't heard of that, but that doesn't sound outside the range of some shit they try to pull, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like, and, and like, I have a friend out in Vegas and she's like a fantastic, um, She's a fantastic singer and she does like now she's like doing some more like future soul shit and mm -hmm. um, she's fantastic. But she was just like, yo, my label just said that I can't release my album until I get a viral TikTok with with my song. So uh, give me some ideas, folks. <laughs> like I need to Damn. figure this shit out. And, and it's like oh, I couldn't imagine. I know, I know. It, it's very strange. And I just saw this Rolling Stone article about it, too, where it, it was a bigger... It was an artist that we all know. I wish I could remember the lady's name. Uh, but it's an artist that we all know. And they're like, hey, um, do you think that post was a part of the ploy, though? Well, it could be. Yeah, of course. But that I, I looked at the numbers of that post because, yeah, that ran by my head, too, Raina. But it, but that, it, you know, it had, it, that was far from viral. It was far from viral numbers. So I don't know what the case is for her. Maybe it's all a big, you know, a big marketing scheme, but like, it, yeah. but it is something that is happening. I, I, Rolling Stone just did a write up on it. There's companies that you can hire to get a viral TikTok so you can get your song in rotation. Right. You know, yeah. and increase your algorithms and sponsor it and like push it more. Yeah, just yeah. I don't I honestly don't even know what the fuck is those, Dave. Let's fucking look this up because this is good information for people to know. Uh, what is it? Um video companies. Uh organic TikTok promotion. Let's see. Sure. <laughs> yeah, very organic, right? uh discover viral businesses popular videos no marketing uh dive oh damn it i wish I, lizzo knows what she's doing she's definitely using tiktok to her advantage yeah well i think i think again like it's a tool it's a, it's a big part yeah. of it's a big part of an artist's tool uh yeah. tool bag is the in is social media and it's um oh let's see are you talking about post malone no no what's up crap my pants <laughs> you mind if i make a comment real quick please do come in all right so uh this is what i've been kind of telling myself and also trying to encourage other artists right like numbers statistics um 
virality, that all does not determine your legitimacy, your authenticity, or the quality of your art. Like you can make art and just keep it to yourself. You don't have to post it. You don't have to share it with anyone. You know, that, that doesn't determine the quality of your art. I feel like some artists feel like just because another artist is out there receiving a bunch of accolade and respect that somehow that makes their art greater, but that's a limiting perspective and it's going to create a, a low mental health for you as an artist. But on the other side of that, when you start marketing and selling your art and becoming an entrepreneur, then you do have a responsibility, not only to yourself, but the art that you are marketing to do these things, make TikToks, make videos, post uh, post music videos, do uh, behind the scenes videos. Like all of that is a part of that, you know? And so I tell a lot of people, if they're not ready for that kind of a lifestyle, you know, all the videos, all the content, all the constant posting and knowing what hashtags to use, make the art. Don't not, not make the art. Just don't worry about all of that other stuff because it's a great tool to use and it's necessary. But I feel like it becomes a split between artists and then entrepreneur because the entrepreneurs are the ones trying to sell something. The artists are the ones just making something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, that's great advice, man, because uh, people get so caught up in that, like the social media side of it. And uh, you know, I've talked to people who are like, oh, I got to get my numbers up before I can release an, a song or I got, you know, I got to get my numbers up before I can release art or whatever, whatever the medium is. It's mm -hmm. like they're so worried about getting their numbers up. And it's like, yo, yeah. but what do you, I mean, what are you going to do? Like, do you even have an album? Do you have like, <laughs> do, do you have your do you have your talent honed in? Do you have your what, what you do? Is it is it at peak performance right now? Uh, for the stage of your life in this stage of your life is your talent is your is your medium is it at peak performance is po the best possible it can be um is that is, is that the case because if it's not then you got your priorities mixed up because yeah, yeah. again numbers are important if you're going to use it but i feel like if you make good art if you make good music eventually someone's going to find it and if you're if you're out there you know just pull, putting it out putting it out however you however you do it i feel like if you're making the best you could be then eventually it's going to get some kind of attention from somewhere you know what i mean it, it, it's just the worst thing you can do is 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 not make anything and trying to get like the attention first. That doesn't make yeah, sense. That's, yeah, that's that's a tough thing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have something. You gotta have something to to for people to. Uh, you gotta have content before you can go in there. I, I hate seeing people with like ten thousand, twenty thousand like followers, like a bunch of followers, or whatever. Mm. And I see their posts, and they have like four posts and it's just like picture them outside posting up next to their house or like their car or something and it's like what what is your thing here like what what right. is your theme do people like is it just because you like look cool like that why people follow you or do you actually like do something you know right or did you buy those follows <laughs> a lot of people do <laughs> yeah man yeah man um <laughs> movie dutchman put it there want to be organically famous on tiktok click here yeah i mean that's <laughs> that's the thing there's a lot of bots that you could buy that shit and you can always tell you can always tell when people got bot likes because you you see what a hundred thousand likes or a hundred thousand um followers and you go on their latest post and there's like four likes and all the comments are just like bot comments, you know, I mean, yeah. or, or just fire flames, you know, it's like fire emoji. It's like, we can see it. it, no, it I see it. It's very, it, it, and it kind of goes back to what you're saying. You know, when we first started this whole discussion was, you know, it's like people look at those numbers and they're like, oh yeah, this person has it going on, but, yeah. but there's nothing there. There's no substance behind it. Imagine yeah. investing in fake likes or whatever. And then three years, the site is irrever irreverent, irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. And, you know, everybody keeps saying that Instagram is going out and Instagram is on its way out. Instagram is going the way of Facebook. Would you agree with that? Uh, yes. And then no, I, I think that, uh, it's kind of too tough to determine right now. I think it's, it's at that crossroads where it could go either way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's introducing the reels and shit. So it's trying to become more like TikTok, and right. a little bit more fast paced and, you know, but there is a level of like people just getting like 
tired of it. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like you're just getting quote unquote old. <laughs> and so I would not be surprised if like with everything they're doing with like the metaverse yeah. gets converted into this hyper app, which is like all the apps in one big <laughs> fucking I don't know. <laughs> like I could see the reptilians do us or shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. The, the reptile people in the Zuck, <laughs> The Zucks of the world. Um <laughs> Uh, to me, Facebook is a little more dead than Insta, but Insta is on the same path and getting dropped by me, at least. Well, yeah, I mean, the thing about Instagram and TikTok is that TikTok is very locked down in a sense where you can't really put... Look at that. Look at him staying hydrated, everybody. Stay fucking hydrated. Don't, 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 don't go drinking sodas. Drink that gallon of water every day. Um hey. That's right. That's right. Get it done, son. Uh, but the shit, I just distracted myself. I forgot what I was talking about, <laughs> Mr. Fizzy. Uh, what were we talking about? We we're talking Instagram about Instagram being dead. Oh yeah, yeah. The the thing about TikTok is that it's a uh, it's very much a um, uh, it, it it's meant to be for kids or at least a family friendly app. So like people. You know, it's a lot. The censorship there is way more uh, extensive than it is on oh, Instagram. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, like, I mean, because just now, uh, I, I just heard that they're going to be eliminating anybody who's, you know, wearing, you know, the booty, the 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 Insta girls, you know, the. Oh, the, they're you know, not going to do that. They make them too much money. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's like the profit right there. Man. He's All like this, that ass. You know how many? You know how many people replay those videos like a hundred times? I'm bro, one of them. Shit. I'm one of them. But I'm just the screen saying, time, bro. <laughs> well, but what I but but that's from TikTok. I mean, like, right. I mean, and <laughs> even there's some creators on TikTok who are like, follow me on Instagram to see the uncensored story or whatever the uncensored con content or. You know, so a lot of times you see TikTokers diverting people to Instagram or YouTube right. to get to get uh, to to be able to to say what they want to say. See, that's what I do. I smoke a lot of weed, and they don't they don't let you like have right. any like tobacco smoke, any right. any kind of like really inference. And there's ways you can like kind of get away with it. But I mean, I'm like I, I smoke, so like <laughs> I I can't be on this family friendly thing, yeah. burning big blizzies and shit. You know? <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, and and it's it's just it's very interesting to me and how popular TikTok is. Yeah, it's very locked down in that sense. Um, yeah. But it's but people freaking I love it. I, I honestly it love is it. entertaining. I, I I can't get enough of it, man. Like um, you know, like when all this stuff in Ukraine was breaking out, I was seeing articles. Uh, not articles, but I was seeing footage, live footage, not live. God damn it. I was seeing videos from the battleground that I saw on national news like two weeks later. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like it's very front line. It's very like it's it's very right now. And it's it, it, and people there's a lot of cool people who have a lot of cool takes on certain issues Oof. that I'm really interested in. And yeah. my algorithm is very tailored to that. So I, mm. I really do appreciate what it does offer as for content. Whereas my Instagram is just like big butts and like mm -hmm. bleezies and fucking, yeah. you know, and more Random. butts, you know, Random what I mean? bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> bullshit that, and, and ads, you know what I mean? So it's like, I, I can see, I don't know, man, there, I, I see a value in both of them. Uh, I, right. I just I don't get TikTok and how to like crack it. That's the thing that I don't really understand is like uh, uh, I, I, I'm not getting it. Are you getting it? I struggle just giving a fuck. Like I could <laughs> do it if I invested my soul into it. Yeah. But I'm such like a like I'm in that reason like I'm an old head because I just don't care. Like it's just like I should care. I know I should care. And if I had like maybe like a manager or something that was breathing down my neck, I would make the most tight fire content. But genuinely in my soul. I really could care less about sitting there holding the camera in my face and being like reading my song lyrics and then all this shit. Like I get it's what I'm supposed to do, but I make my own songs. I book my own shows. I distribute my own music. I, I do my own merchandise, distribute my own merchandise. I'm very hands-on in so many aspects that it just, the last thing I really want to do is like put on a show for yeah. the internet right. like that's just when i'm doing my music like when i'm doing performance or stuff like this like i'm all for it but i mean 
just chilling in my house and just pulling the camera out and doing this shit. Like, oh, I'd rather be with my cat, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Playing some video games. Yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> I do. I do. I do know what you're saying, man. I, I really do. It, it's really, it, it's a time consuming thing to just it is, put together content and, I mean, it's just, I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I wish I could understand what works for TikTok because obviously I'm not putting enough effort into it, but I think I'm on your level where it's like, I, I really just don't give a shit. I really yeah. just don't. <laughs> just don't I'd rather care. enjoy the content at this point. Like, Yeah, yeah no, I, and like, I'll just put, it's really interesting to me, and I don't know if you do this, maybe you find it, maybe uh, maybe you try this but i'll i'll sort of create like a reel or i'll create a tiktok and i'll post it on different platforms and yeah. just see how it does on each platform same video yeah. different platforms and 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 just see how it how it functions and it's just so interesting to see what takes off on what platform and what yeah. i mean it's never tiktok it's never fucking tiktok it's yeah, fucking fuck asshole it, tiktok but like i was saying at the top of the show i have this video on um on instagram that's like over two hundred thousand deep what's up fire oh, yeah. horse um yeah yeah but it's just me on the podcast just watching stuff about the johnny depp amber heard uh trial and so right. it's not even <laughs> really my content it just I'm has my yeah, Amber. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, she's she's just the best. Uh, she she has been the gift that keeps on giving. Her and the baby have been like the gifts that keep on giving. <laughs> uh, have you been following the baby? Hey man, I, I mean, I'm I'm up to date with a lot of shit, uh, <laughs> especially in hip hop and music culture. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've heard some things, man. Dude, the baby is is is. I mean, I I can't. I mean, it's just, mwah, it's beautiful. Like, I, I love his attitude. I love that he doesn't give a fuck. And he makes enough people a lot of money for him to be able to live that I don't give a fuck life. I uh, love how, like, he's such a publicly accepted, like, murder. You know, everyone <laughs> knows this dude. Like, there's footage out there of him, like, popping dude in Walmart. In Walmart. Like, dead. Gone. Uh, but yeah. like everyone's like the baby and like i don't have any personal feelings towards the baby yeah but i just think that fact alone says a lot about our society <laughs> you know what i'm saying you're right man you're right we'll we're willing to forgive a lot as long as you bring them fire bars exactly entertainment <laughs> it's entertainment, entertainment is the though. key right right you could be murdering people at walmart but that that in itself is entertainment so that flies how why does that footage even on the internet like realistically like hot that, i don't know man crazy. and that regardless of the situation that's still someone's son yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah, so it's, awful. it's like it's i mean tough, he, he was on stage you know talking bad about the lgbtq plus community and and he's still on top of the world man i mean i i guess his last album didn't do as good as the other ones or something i don't know i i i'm not too versed on that but like yeah i'm versed on all the shit that he's causing uh yeah. he, like he's punching his own artists he's slapping them up it's, <laughs> you, you, it's it's you gotta be careful with like your platform man especially when you've got like millions of millions of people adoring to your platform and then you're i mean you could say like well i'm a person i can do it i want all these things but it's also about having social awareness because if you understand the impact that you have on a culture then you understand that the, those things that you do have rippling effects you know you have not only fanatics but you've got people who like idolize you you know what i'm saying and you don't you and then abusing that platform and having them do it for the wrong reasons karmically. I just feel like isn't always the best thing. Yeah, no, I, I feel you, man. I, I, I feel he probably will have something. There's something probably waiting down the road that's not gonna, uh, you know, that's not gonna go in his favor, and it's probably gonna, you know, honestly, I, he he. I mean, there's no other group of people that are so untouchable in this in our culture here in America, uh, like the LGBTQ plus community. And after he was saying what he was saying, you know, uh, yeah. I, I was surprised he busted through that, man, because he lost a lot of a lot of uh, festivals. He lost a lot yeah. of, you know, a lot of endorsements. 
So, I mean, we're, but we're also talking about a dude who used to walk around in a diaper and gold chains. So, like, I don't know. <laughs> like, it's the baby. I don't, the baby I don't know what people expect. I don't know what people expect out the dude. But, hey, you know, he's uh, he, he's living his best, I guess, man. I, I don't know. Hey, man. All the power to him. You know, mm -hmm. I hope that. His journey yields him whatever he deserves, I guess. Right, <laughs> yeah. Whatever seeds he's sowing, he'll he'll yeah. he'll reap that shit. He'll reap that shit. Uh, it's a, the music industry, bro, can be a serious trap, man. Especially, yeah. you know, if you and this is not even about the baby necessarily. It's about people like when you've got ego or damaged egos, or you're going through like emotional things or got inner life things, and you get tossed into the music industry. It can create a lot of different ripple effects of toxic situations. You see it happen a lot of times in different genres, musicians, and rappers are definitely a big testament to that, you know. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because a lot of these record labels and a lot of these executives and ARs are targeting young minority youth who are exposed to these kind of situations, people with histories, criminal records, with talent. That doesn't take away from their talent, their musical ability, but it's the fact that they're targeting these people who they're aware has these yeah. obstacles, challenges, traumas, and then they're putting them in positions of power. Yeah. And it's like, you put anyone from those situations in the position of power, and it's only a matter of time before you create some people who are going to use that and negative ways and you know that's why i'm so about being independent for the mm. most part and promoting independency you know i just think controlling and having our own power and leverage is everything because these young kids are getting put into situations with millions of dollars and and, and being put in traps and going to california hollywood place they've never been around celebrities big check marks and followers and they think like this is it and then the balloon gets popped and they realize it's all an illusion. It's all a money grab and you're just a product. And it, it, it breaks a lot of people. And, you know, it's just one of those things where I, I, I love the industry, but I also, I'm in this industry, I guess, but I'm not of the industry. Like I try not to take those qualities and bring them into the things I do for mm -hmm. myself because regardless of the chaos and craziness of what's trending, what's popular, what's popping in different angles in the industry, I got to be focused on like the night heart and what the night heart has to offer because I can, I cannot be popping now. I cannot be popping 10 years from now. Shit, my shit could not pop until after I'm gone, but I want to make sure the legacy and quality of content that is there, people can actually say like, what the fuck? Like this man put, his all into it you mm -hmm. know and so uh that that limits me from many distractions and energy vampiric shit like doing unnecessarily chaotic shit like a lot of rappers and artists do do and mm -hmm. i'm not taking shots at anyone i just try to avoid those kind of chaotic situations and lifestyles because it just isn't for my creative process or my personal life yeah and 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 um you know for I mean, when when you were first on, you kind of went into it that that you do come from a chaotic chaotic life, and you did yeah, you man. have made some poor choices in your younger years that you Absolutely. that you that you that you that you've moved away from, and you focused mm -hmm. more on a healthier thing. And and what's sad is that there's a lot of kids that don't have that outlet because you could you imagine your choices you have been making without you know without art without your music and stuff. Bro, so uh, I'd be a monster, dog. Like <laughs> I'd be on some shit. Like I don't, I don't know who I would be, bro. I'd probably be a zombie. Like I'd um, probably be off some drugs, like roaming the streets. Um, I would be fucking probably like criminally insane, bro. <laughs> like I'm sure, like no, about I, art, yeah. dog. <laughs> no, I, I'm with you. That that's like one of the questions I used to ask all the time. Is like, where do you think you'd be without your art? And it's like, man, I think I would be like. I think I would be like at least like 150 pounds heavier, like, like fucking yeah. like on heroin or, or, or just mm -hmm. being weird, you know, like just yeah. being that like sweaty guy who like stares <laughs> a little too long, you know, like, I don't know. It's like really creeper. Uh, C20. Oh, my God. Welcome in. Thank you so much for that sub. Good to see you, my friend. Way, way to be in here. 
Oh my God, for 18 months. My God, thank you so much, C20. It's good to see you. It, it is, my friend. Here, this is for you. Uh, let's see, where we're going to go. We're gonna... Hello and welcome to We Speak English Good TV. I'm your announcer, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Now, please, put your fists in the air. Wave them like you do not care. For your host, Mike EP. That's me. Thank you so much, C20, for the 18 month subscription. I, I, I truly appreciate you. Way to make an interest. An interest. Way to make an interest. <laughs> Way to make an entrance. Uh, crap my pants. It says that the baby is the Donald Trump rap. <laughs> 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 which i think is hilarious uh mikey pee pee <laughs> thank you thank you morbs uh yeah and, and they're just saying just just controversy wise i mean maybe yeah. maybe maybe is uh but uh, I, uh tom mcdonald have you ever heard of tom mcdonald no no who's tom I, McDonald? he's the most controversial rapper like his whole aim is to make people uncomfortable by quote unquote saying his truth, mm. which I can't say it's not his truth. I don't like to take away from those facts, but it's purposely and intentfully. Every song is made to stir the pot about something. Mm. And it gets to the point where it's like, I have respect for certain levels of his craft, but as an artist, I'm like, bro, it seems a little clout chaser to make every song you know is, is trying to like spark some kind of like mm. internal debate and all this shit like i get it but then again it's like is this your whole thing yeah like, is, is it you know yeah no i i have a friend like that too he's a he's an internet friend he he does pretty well on youtube his name is nick natoli and he He's written songs for Snoop Dogg. He's written songs for I mean he's like he he he's primarily a writer and he's signed to a label for just writing. But his personal music is all like ultra he's just like he he I think his song was called Ultra Maga. Uh he's a huge Donald Trump fan. He I mean he's just like um everything everything he hold on. Let, let's just look at his uh, I fucking love it. Uh, like, I don't agree with them, and I tell them all the time, like, hey, I don't agree with what you're saying, but I fucking love that you just do whatever the fuck you want to do. <laughs> because some people, you know, uh, and some people, do it. some people, yeah, so a lot of people are afraid to do it. And, and you know, like you were saying, you know, he's trying to speak his truths. And I feel like some people hide behind, like, oh, I'm going to speak my truths just to be an asshole. You know what I mean? Right. But, um, uh, Hold on, let me bring up Nick. He's been on the show several times, and I, I want to bring him back on because he was also interviewed by um, by because uh, 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 he's a conspiracy theorist as well, and he was interviewed by the BBC to uh, in regards to the oh my god, what was the what was that group on who was uh, the oh my god the group that was on 4chan. That uh, they were blaming for January 6th. What the fuck were they called? Uh, I don't recall, bro. Uh, it's all good. Who cares? Well, here's, uh, here's, let's just look at this. Conspiracy shit, right? theorists, bro. <laughs> <laughs> just conspiracy theorists. So, the, so, like, okay, here we go. So, like, his, uh, the new Republican, that's his latest song. Uh, I don't know what that even says. He said, look, this one's called Monkey Pox. His latest song is called Monkey Pox. Holy shit. Uh, let's see. God's not dead. You know what I mean? Like, he's just he's just in it. He's just in it. MAGA King. That's his song. MAGA King. Oh. <laughs> what, is he on horseback? Uh, he is. He's on horseback. Uh, <laughs> he has a king of diamonds there. He's a uh, oh here we go here we go here's a here's a really really uh, topical one Roe versus Wade right. his this whole song is about about how he's against abortion uh, I mean it's just like he does not give a fuck and again Bold as fuck. I don't care it, you know like I don't I don't I don't agree with what he's saying all the time. But uh, I, I respect the fact that he's just doing his shit and he's killing it. I mean, look at these numbers. He has like 8,000 likes on this, 60 comments, 4,000. You know, like he, he's being himself. Hey, man, being a part of MAGA is like being a part of a cult, bro. It's true. So it's, like it's true. Tapping he's... into the other cultists, man, you got yourself a little. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, man, you're you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Look at this: thirteen thousand all time streams for this release. It's secret society type shit, bro. Yo, I mean, he's tapped into a market, a very active market that uh, that he, you know, I, I I'm pretty sure he believes in this shit. But it's just, I I don't know, man. He canceled Disney. <laughs> Oh shit! Like he does not give a fuck. Hold on, this is him talking. Uh, this is him talking about conspiracy, conspiracy theorists at oh. this table. So this will be easily understood. It takes hard fucking work to find out what's going on in the aggregate society. It's not like I just pulled up an app on my phone, pushed a button, and all of a sudden I got woke. Like no, dude. I try to tell this to my grandmother who's addicted to CNN. She's addicted right. to Don Lemon. I tell her like, doesn't it seem? Was it hard? What you just did right now, you just turned on the TV with one button, one thumb, and you watch, watch Don Lemon like this, and all of a sudden you've got everything figured out. I was like, does that seem fucking hard to you? I said to my, to my grandma there, I call her Gam Gam. I'm like, Gam Gam, I've Gam, been Gam. up all fucking night. I haven't slept in fucking four days. I've been on this fucking app. This, I go on YouTube, I look up by upload date. I see some kid who just uploaded something that's probably going to be taken the fuck down. You know what I mean? Like it takes rigorous, insane work to find out the truth. And most people don't want to do it. Here's the thing. We're all, which, which, I mean, there is some truth to that. There's a lot of truth to to people who just get all their information from one source, and then yeah. you know what I mean, and, and then they 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 just go around spouting it as truth. And I'm not trying to talk shit about Don Lemon or CNN, although CN, right. CNN and uh, is the mouthpiece of the corporate controlled state. But whatever, <laughs> it, it it is it, it is sort of a mouthpiece for for uh, for propaganda for for you know promoting. Uh, whatever the state, the corporate, uh, the corporate captured state is fucking doing, wants to pu push. Uh, not that I'm a big fan of Fox News or anything, but I mean, it's still, it's like a fucking, uh, I, I watch CNN. I get information from CNN. I do get information from, you know, MSNBC. I get information from New York Times. I get information from New York Post. I feel like that there's a lot of, if you're only staying in one lane, you're, you're kind of not getting the full picture. But, uh, you know, I'm getting off topic here because, you know, I think. <laughs> Well, I don't know if we're getting out though. I think we're still going. What would Bonnie say? How how's a boot? How dare you? How's a boot? Try reading a book instead of getting all your from uh, all your resources from YouTube. <laughs> you know what? We don't got time for books, Bon Bon. All we got time for is Alex Jones, motherfucking Tim Pool, and fucking Russell Brand. That's all we got time for. Okay. Gosh. I don't. I don't really watch. Alex Jones or anything, but anyways, uh, yeah, it, I, I don't even know where we were going with that, but I, I don't know how, how do you consume? I, I know you say that you kind of keep your head out of that. You keep your head in your, your own business, but do you, do you follow what's going on in the world? Do you, do you, do you try to, to listen to different programs? What, what, how do you consume, you know, information? Um, I try to create like balance, like, I go through like detoxes where I like won't be connected to social media for like a week, two weeks. I won't check like any news. I'll just like stay far, far away from things just to clear my head space. Then I'll try to keep updated and try to, you know, kind of figure out what's going on with everybody and situations in the world. But I try not to let to let let, let it sit too long because mm -hmm. like I get emotionally invested in shit. And all yeah. of a sudden I'm about to think it's the end of the world and shit. And like I can't, I can't be doing that. Man. Yeah, I feel you, man. Fucking nuclear apocalypse is on Right, the right. Shit. No, I'm I like, feel the, you. The fucking polar, polar ice caps are melting. Like, bro, like, what's gonna <laughs> happen to us, bro? <laughs> I know. I, 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 um, yo, the night that Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, like a chunk of the polar ice caps fell into the ocean the size of the state of New York. Holy smokes. And you know what people were talking about? Fucking Chris Rock and Will Smith. <laughs> it's a beautiful distraction. It's a beautiful distraction. This this like celebrity culture from from um you know from the same as division. I see it as you know like it's the same as dividing people by you know by their race or by their gender or by uh how how uh how they vote. I, I think it's all sort of a division. It's a distraction to keep us from what's really going on. What decisions are being made in the background? It's like or or what what horrible things that are, are happening. 
happening in the world that affect us, like the fucking polar ice caps melting and falling into the into the ocean. It's like oh, these distractions I feel like are put in place for a reason because people, exactly. you know, because the powers that be. Now I know I sound like a conspiracy theorist, but I, <laughs> but it, it, what what what's more important? You know, what I mean, what's more important is is the fact that Will Smith made a stupid uh, mistake and hit Chris Rock. Or is it more important that we need to like take a, a, a bigger look at what we're doing to the earth and how we're treating it? And you know, like what's it's more control, important? Bro. It's, it's control, bro. It's control. Bro. And I don't think it's and you know, you would think that something on that level would be on the front page of the New York Times. You know, Don Lemon would be talking about it on CNN. You'd think about you'd think that this is all these things would be front and center, but no, it's Chris Rock got his ass slapped by you know. Well, if people knew the truth, then you can't control someone's like it's gonna be a fear respect response, you yeah. know, emotional response. And you can't control people's fear-based emotional responses. And the most time it's they want fear is submission, but also if you create too much concern, you create too much chaos, then you can't control that. You know what I'm saying? So to some extent you gotta kind of got to light, lighten the load and dilute the sauce so people aren't constantly being barraded by this bullshit and then everyone's losing their mind. I mean, America alone's mental health is so low, like, as a society. Yeah. Let alone with everything going on in the actual world. It's like, as much as I don't like, I don't have a, I don't try to be personally opinionated about the whole Will Smith, Chris Tucker thing, but as much as it is what it is type shit, uh, it kind of is a distraction. And like, that's, the, that's what art and entertainment really is, is a distraction. I think it's yeah. also about how to integrate like quality content into the, to the distraction. Cause it's like, I've watched a lot of movies that were a waste of two hours honestly like i've listened to a lot of music where i'm like what the fuck is going on in my ears right now you know and then i've listened i've watched some movies that i'll be watched a million times because mm. they're a perfect distraction anytime i need to be distracted you know and so um I don't know, man. It, it, it's weird. I, I think that it's not necessarily a bad thing that these uh, things happen in media or just that media in general has such a hold on our attention span. I think it sucks when it's diluted with unauthentic content misrepresentation. Like I see a lot of typecasting, a lot of adding like a black character or a queer character just because that's like representation or the one Asian friend or whatever and it's like yes but no like you're kind of <laughs> missing it and so um I like the distractions when it's actually meant to also enrich educate kind of mm -hmm. create like some kind of thought provoking content because if it's just bullshit then yeah it's really a distraction and you're there's way more informative things that you could be spending your time on, yeah you know? Sometimes it just comes off as pandering to a certain demographic, right? Like it's like yeah. it's just pandering to a certain demographic or or in some cases like uh you know they're actually kowtowing to whole countries like like Marvel. Yeah. They changed yeah. Uh, in Doctor Strange, they changed the the Buddhist monk into a white lady into a yeah. Irish lady like what the yeah. fuck but it was only because is it oh, no Tibetan my bad Tibetan monk because in the comics it's a Tibetan monk who is like the oh, I can't remember uh, who is their like sort of I don't think it's a guru but who, who was the what Tilda Swinton Swilden um, they they originally that was supposed to be the part that Tilda Swilden uh, was playing was originally supposed to be a, a Tibetan monk uh, according to the comic books, but they changed it because they didn't want to piss off China and their demographic because they don't re recognize Tibet, right? Like they have this right. ongoing situation with Tibet and they don't want to, um, they don't want to, they don't want to ruin that money. They want to keep right. that money, you know? So it's like, uh, uh, they, they, they if, if Hollywood cared about, if they really cared about, about LGBTQ, they wouldn't have changed. What was it? What movie? It was the um, 
it was was it the latest uh, Harry Potter spinoff? What a Fantastic Beast! Uh, yeah. I think they were supposed to one of the characters. Hit to that. Oh, it, it's one. It's it's uh one of the characters were supposed to be. It was supposed to be gay, but yeah. they changed the they changed that whole situation. I think it was Dumbledore, right? It was Dumbledore is supposed to be gay? Yeah. And they changed it because they didn't want their bottom line to get because of China. I mean, the fucking original actor was uh, Sir Ian McKellen, right? Yeah. So it's like, and he's gay as fuck. That's what I'm like. <laughs> you, 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 you can't cast a gay man. Oh no. <laughs> it's it's just I, I feel like you know like so. it's it's like like you said you know the, it, it it comes off as disingenuous and it comes it's off as. And and um and it is just pandering to a, a certain demographic, uh, but again they don't want that to go out to China and they don't want to lose those millions of dollars from China. So it's just like, what the fuck's going on here? It's like you act like you know like right now in June is going to be Pride Month and they're gonna and you know like all these mu- these movie studios, Amazon, all these companies are going to be having their their gay flag, uh, their yeah, Pride flag their going gay there. But if it comes down to losing movies. money, they're not gonna do shit they're not yeah. gonna they're not gonna fuck they're gonna cow cowards yes morby cowards fucking cowards and it, it just it it, it bothers me <laughs> e mckellen was gandalf not dumbled oh my bad <laughs> oh you know that's that's true uh who was who no, was who was funny. dumbledore <laughs> who's dumbledore then <laughs> look he's like i don't know this shit um, yeah, uh, ask me anything about Marvel though. I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> I got you. I'm in there. Uh, Dumbledore was Richard Harris. Okay, uh, <laughs> our bad. Hey, old white guys, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I don't know these old white people. <laughs> what did Bob Bot say? It's like back in like medieval times when nobody knew how to read except for the priest, keeping the population dumb, only feeding them the information they need has always been the way the government works. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree with that. Crap my pants. I'm glad Chris Rock didn't make a big deal about it, though. Just brushed it off being the better man. I agree. You know, he could have been an asshole. They could have fought. Could you imagine, though, if Chris Rock would have, like, just started swinging? See, <laughs> see, I have an opposite perception. See, I'm a real nigga. See, if niggas come slap me, bro, hey, hey. Hey, I dare you. I will body you, bro. Like, to me, it's the audacity. It's like, Will tried to make Chris bitch me. Yeah. Like, that is a statement. Fuck the slap. He tried to make him bitch me. Yeah. And I res- I do respect the finesse and grace of Chris Rock. Yeah. I, you you raise your hand like you my father. I'm, I'm, I'm kicking you in the nuts. Like, I, I, I would have kicked him dead in the balls. Yo. That's how you end the Oscars. You kick a nigga dead in the balls. <laughs> you know what? And how that, about that? That would. <laughs> how about that? Uh, uh, you know, and here's the thing too is that um, that that Chris Rock is a very small, petite man. Okay, and and Will Smith, he knows how to fight. He knows yeah. how to fight. You he know, a lot of action movies. He's done a lot. <laughs> he could do it. He could. He, I he mean, he's, shot, so I oh, feel like you're right. If if you have that kind of, you got. He's got height. He's got reach on him. He's he was Ali, son. He was Ali. Yeah, yeah, he you know he good. knows how to swing a little bit. So yeah, that might have been his only option. Is just like knee him. Exactly. Knee him in the balls. Kick him in the balls. Whatever it takes. What are you gonna do? What and then, do? And then they know? and then they're gonna fucking give him a standing O. What the fuck? That was some dub shit right he there. He got a dub. He, he got a dub. All he had to do was hit him with the quick right in the pair. Yeah. Right in the pair. Crack busted shit. <laughs> it just reminded me of family beef at a cookout. <laughs> <laughs> C20. <laughs> Two cousins and shit beefing. None of my business. I'm in the corner being nosy. Yo, but it but it was it was a great distraction. It was a great distraction. And and and, and at the end of this, we, we can all just sit back and realize how big of hypocrites that Hollywood is and, and how much that they they truly don't care about people's feelings. They don't care about certain cultures. They don't care about communities. They care about money and they care about you know the image of whatever they're putting off. They don't care about anything else. There's no substance to it. And so when they're trying to sit here and and people 
you know, actors are trying to lecture people on how to feel about certain topics. It's like, I don't really give a fuck because you would sell your grandma for a fucking, you know, a, a moment in the sunlight and the moment in the spotlight. So it's like, y- y- which a lot of those moments are just moments. You know what I'm saying? Like they're just moments. It's, if, like I respect Snoop Dogg because that man made a fucking very luxurious career and stepped into so many lanes because he made it work. Mm-hmm. A lot of people get that 15 minutes of fame and don't know how to make it an hour. And yeah. it's like, they don't know how to turn that hour to a day. Dude, you know what I'm saying? I fucking and love Snoop Dogg about that. Yeah, man, please. I'm sorry I interrupted. Go, bro. Nah, fucking go, man. <laughs> uh, he just got Death Row Records too, man. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's fucking yeah, so uh, uh, moving Dutchman. Thank you so much for uh, for gift subbing Mad King Can- Kanzi uh, at Mad King. Sorry that we got that wrong, but but you knew, you got what we're but what we were talking about. You you understand. Uh, hopefully you understood what we were talking about, and and semantics can kind of go to the, to the wayside about that one. But moving Dutchman, thank you so much for gift subbing Mad King. I love you, baby. <laughs> kisses, kisses, besos. Um, but it was a. Uh, uh, fuck, I forgot what I was going to talk about. Oh, well, that that's what happens. That's what happens. What if they really do film G.I. Jane 2 just to troll Will Smith? <laughs> they probably make millions. I wouldn't put it past them. I would not put it past them. Uh, uh, let's see. As far as I know, Dumbledore being gay is still, uh, uh, still canon. Just saying. You mean Gandalf? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but... It, it, but I just oh I see spoiler alert okay calm down uh it's still canon I don't know what that means I'm not getting what you're saying Mad King I'm sorry but in any case Dumbledore is gay canon is like accurate across like the main continuity yeah oh like, yeah yeah thank you okay thank you Nightheart <laughs> see I need, need the younger generation to help me here <laughs> i'm a comic book fan and with everything that happens in comic books and like how many reiterations and people write the same character a hundred times mm-hmm. it's hard to know what's canon and what's not because one ra- one writer will be like well spider-man can spit webs out of his fucking butthole and another yeah. one would be like well no he has a web thing and it's like okay which one's real and it's the one that's canon Gotcha. I, I dig. I dig. Well, yeah. And wasn't it like a, a big part of the storyline? I, I thought it was like a big part of the story. It was all over the news. Yeah. JKR. And, and of course, JK Rowling. Everyone hates her now because she's yeah. we're not we're not going there. We're not going there. Uh, <laughs> we'll stay out of that area. The butthole one. <laughs> bon Bon's like it better be the butthole one. I like the, the butthole. butthole one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But but yeah, it uh, in any case, you know, the, these people who are making these movies, they, they don't give a fuck about anybody. They just they only care about what they're doing and who they're who they're you know, whatever. Hey. I give a fuck about my album though. That's exactly. And I was about to shift I was about to <laughs> shift that way. Because Dude, tell me about the album. So, uh, uh, is it cool if we play a song, or do you want to keep it low key yeah, until we can, we can play a song, bro? Uh, uh, which ones did I send you? Uh, you sent me four, and I'll just read them off to you. Psych Ward, Lost My Mind, Hybrid. No, yeah, you sent me and touch. No, um, that's we play Psych Ward. Okay. Um. So, if you guys were here at the beginning and we're playing some videos, you you kind of hear what what uh, uh what uh what Nightheart was doing and he'll probably i don't know if you're going to go back but uh what what you're doing now what you're good yeah you're like whatever whatever wherever the spirit takes me deservedly and she isn't really because she's successful so man always that i don't know what that was okay so we are sh- we're gonna shift focus here so first of all tell me a little bit about the album before we jump into the song because i want to um uh, you know, like, uh, what, 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 what have you been doing with this? What, cause, cause it's a definitely a different direction from what you've been doing and what sort of like, what, what sort of, uh, what sort of propelled you in this direction, especially coming from, you know, a very hip hop, uh, I mean, like, you know, like you, you do different stuff it, within the hip hop genre, which I really respect. Right. Uh, and you're not just rapping, you're singing, you're doing all kinds of stuff. What sort of propelled you in this direction? So, uh, honestly, oh, yeah. man, 
this album came out of absolutely nowhere. I got no intention of making it whatsoever. Oh, okay. uh, I had a whole different album in mind that I was going to make that plot it planned out. And then I heard like, like, like an indie rock beat and I was listening to it with my producer, Corey and session productions. And, uh, it's like, yeah, I like this. This is different, you know? So I tried vibing to it, started writing, and my songwriting started changing. My, 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 my voice started sounding different to the instrumentation adapting. I'm like, yo, I like this. Like, this feels challenging because it makes me try harder, but it also feels natural because this is, feels, like, good. So I'm like, bro, we're going to make a bunch of songs like this, and we're just going to see what happens. And so over the course of, like, a year and a half, we made like 50 songs Damn. and we're just like, man, like what, which one of these are like the ones, you know? And so I don't know what I was doing at the time, but I was just chilling or whatever. And the, the, the name catch 22 came to me and like, I, I did a quick Google lookup. I'm like, does catch 22 mean what I think it means? And essentially it's like a, a rock and a hard play situation. It's mm -hmm. like, uh, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. And I felt that way as far as my life concerned and my career, my journey with being a musician. Like, I'm very grateful for the blessings and the experiences I've had through music and through my art and the impact I've been able to make. But on the other side of that, the reason I became that heart was from such a damaged, hurt, broken place. And such so much of my art came from me overcoming such darkness that it's, it's like a catch-22. My best, the best version of myself the one that everyone kind of sees as this light comes from such a defeated, broken place. And I feel like no matter what this music and what I'm doing as the Nightheart, it's just what I'm going to be for people. And it's a catch 22. Like I, I, I don't I have no way out of this, honestly. And it's, it's for good reasons and it's for bad reasons, but it kind of is what it is, you know? And this album was, my first dip into my authentic, I feel like, expression without being muddied by other people's opinions or projections mm -hmm. of what I needed to be, what I needed to sound like, what I needed to talk about. Like, I purged and detoxed all those influences and just went straight into what feels good to me as an artist. Like, what makes me enjoy my art again? You know, and this album was my first step into like I listened to it. And I'm like, wow, like I enjoy my own music. Mm -hmm. And like that's one of those experiences that's been harrowing for me, because as much as people will tell me, yo, night, I love your song or night, your your this music has impacted my life in this way or that way. For me, a lot of my music is still like mid. And I don't know if that's because I'm just a creative, constructive, like I'm just just highly opinionated of my own voice and quality. But this album has been the first step in the direction where those voices, those opinions in my own head are gone. I'm just kind of like, this is me and this is it, you know? And so um, I'm happy, man. It's 17 tracks and it's a bunch of different vibes. I got like indie rock, kind of grunge, dream pop. It's all like live instrumentation bass and just vibes and um, it's a coming of age story. It's, 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 it's for like, I feel like any age range, but it's definitely for people going through internal transformations. And that can happen when you're young, it can happen when you're old, it can happen anywhere in the middle, but it's that coming of age of like self-actualization. When you realize like, this is who I am and this is who I'm going to be, you know? And I want this album to serve that for people when they feel like, they're almost cursed and trapped in their own circumstance or their own situation or this like life crazy like bottle and capsule that you, you get put in and you're like, well, is this it for me? You know, there's ways you can make the best out of it. You know, and I want this album to be something, a tool people going through those transformations can use and listen to during it and be like, wow, I can't come out of this chrysalis, you know? So that's my spiel about the album. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's dope, man. And we'll talk more about it. Let's listen to this song. And, and I'm sorry, what was yeah, the song called it. again? Um, it's called Wannabe. It's actually called Wannabe, but the beach is called Psych Ward. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Here yeah. we go. All right, let's listen to Wannabe mm -hmm. off of the new album, Catch 22, which, when is it dropping? Um, Sometime in August. I'm not going to say quite yet. 
Okay. So, so soon in August. Let's go. Pierce my ears and bleach my hair You wonder how I sleep at night Keep that night tub beside my bed I heard a lot of niggas wanna fight me Funny how they all dress just like me Tell them be yourself, quit the high place Trying to ride a wave, you'll end up drowning Like when I when I when you sent me over these tracks and I like the first song came up, I was like, "What is this? <laughs> what is this? this is Die Hard?" But you know, just listening to this and 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 um, uh, you know, like I, I can hear the sort of the trans the transformation because like you're not afraid to growl and yell and and and, and do that scream. Uh, that you do, I don't know if you can call it a scream or a growl. Right. Yeah, a little bit both. Like yeah, that. yeah, but you, <laughs> you've 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 never shied away from that aggression, and and yeah. I, I've always respected that because you don't hear that a lot in in hip hop, and yeah. and then so I mean, of course, this was the next evolution. It's like, well, fuck it, I'll just start. Yeah, I'll just start. I'll get even angstier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll just go all in, bitch. <laughs> and I was just like, that is so rad. I love that you yeah. don't you don't give a fuck. Uh, like you're just like you know what I'm gonna do something completely different and and I just he gives off chill vibes. Well, you should listen Stop. to his other stuff. And by the way, I'm dropping his link in here. It's basically his link tree. I don't know what you call it, but um, go and check him out. He, he has tons of music out. You guys can definitely find all his albums there. Like um, that one I played a song at the top. Uh, I think it was the second song. Like like here, like just listen to this for. We'll listen to this just for a little bit, but like. Yeah. This is this is like another song that Nightheart does. So, so, you know. Yeah, lo-fi. Yeah, it's lo-fi and, and chill. Yeah, I'm addicted to the pen. I look inside myself and ask, where do I begin? Trying to manifest an energy the world can comprehend. But still, I have my doubts. That's the weakness of a man. 
Handed down shoes from God, I still fit them though. Young and still fresh out the box, I never fit in those. Long way from those talent shows, rapping in those empty walls, writing just to fill the void. Wonder if I feel it all. So, I mean, like, I mean, like, that that's what, I mean, that's not all your music. That's not how all your music is, obviously, but. Right. But like you have such a diverse, uh, a diverse sound going on, and uh, it, it's just you don't get that a lot in, in hip hop coming from that world. And I don't even know yeah. if you can go and call it hip hop anymore. Like, what what yeah. are you calling this? I mean, have you thought about like, not to try to so, label um, yourself, but like, have you... for this next project, it's kind of like an indie alternative album. Mm -hmm. Um, it's very like, like it has areas where it kind of switches to like more like punk and then it has like rock and roll grunge but at its core it's like very like indie alternative kind of vibes and uh yeah man it's this new album's kind of a mixed bag bro it's it's got some very consistent themes while mm. also having different energies that appeal to different people uh it's actually funny because that wannabe song i was performing in ken ohio uh i think it was uh two days ago or so and this older black lady comes up to me, maybe in her 60s or 70s, and she's like, I love that song. That one's amazing. And I'm like, you know, this wasn't my target demographic. Like, I wasn't <laughs> thinking that she was going to be fucking with this song so heavy, but she loved it. And I'm like, yo, that was like reaffirming for me because I'm like, yo, that, this is angsty as hell. <laughs> like, but she was just grooving to it. So, like, yeah, man, you, know, you never know, man. Hey, Fame217, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate that. I really do. Uh, Shout out Fame. Hey, yeah. Fame, what's up? What's up? Uh, that That's awesome, man. That's awesome that you can appeal to a, a crowd. And here's the thing, man. Like, I'm hearing, like, Linkin Park vibes, too. So, like, you, <laughs> I, for real, like, I, I'm yeah. definitely feeling that. And, um uh in the other in another song not not yeah, necessarily sure. this song yeah, uh, yeah but I like what you're talking about <laughs> but it it's uh i i do feel like you're gonna hit on these other demographics because i mean lincoln park i mean that's like what is that almost like 20 years old now like that's yeah, that's like there, yeah. that's a long time you know yeah. you're touching on grunge you're talking touching on punk you're gonna be hitting uh, i mean punk's been around since the 80s and stuff so like you yeah. are gonna be hitting on these older heads who are gonna be like oh shit i can groove to this you right, know what yeah, i mean for sure so you're, yeah. you're you will be touching on different demographic <clears throat> demographics in that sense um and, and mad respect man mad respect thank you bro um so you were saying that you 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 wrote like 50 songs like this yeah bro i, I just like a lot of music and like so like my goal because i was in a very systematic place for a while like i was trying to create music for I was in a very like algorithmic, like I was thinking so technically about my art. Yeah. And I said, fuck it. We're just about to just ball the fuck out. So like I just made a bunch of music that I wasn't sure would ever be released. Like even that song, like when I made it, had no I wasn't thinking about releasing it or bring it into the people or anything. I was just like, fuck, this feels great. Like I'm just I just really wanna do this you know and it wasn't until later on when it started really getting curated that i'm like yeah this one's an album cut you know yeah. what i'm saying so uh yeah we made a bunch of them bro yeah. and not and, and some of them may never see the light of day you know yeah. what i'm saying but they were all integral in the creative process of finding what the album was meant to be because i think that all 17 tracks are where they need to be we're actually even what i sent you isn't finished we still got to add some more parts and shit but oh, wow. when it gets releases like it's going to be the cohesive masterpiece magnum opus that like i didn't intend to make but <laughs> manifested itself yeah. and i'm like proud of fuck of it because it's it's so different unique than anything i've done in my own catalog and i'm just interested to see what people think you know getting those opinions getting those perspectives because even though it can be tough as a creative to hear those criticisms it's also important and vital for the growth to hear those honest impressions mm -hmm. you know it helps you really understand how your music affects people even outside of your own personal feelings about it because so i could think of songs the best one on earth and then you've got another guy who says well i really think this is kind of trash and these are the reasons why yeah. and even though i don't take it personal sometimes i listen and i'm like okay you think it sounds like this okay that's fair you know i hear it differently but mm -hmm. 
you're not wrong in certain areas. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll keep that somewhere in consideration, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, the good and the bad criticisms help. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, you know, in all honesty, I, I just see it as the next evolution. Like, I, I honestly, just because you know, you what you've put out in the past, you know, is almost. Uh, for foreshadowed something like this just with yeah. again with how you will growl and on on over rip hip-hop rip rop yeah. rip rop yeah. <laughs> rip hop rip, 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 <laughs> we're right. calling it rip hop right now baby <laughs> uh and and the live instrumentation uh, are you working with some local guitarists who, yeah, who are you um, working with as a production so shout out my boy in session productions he's been doing a lot of the helping out producing and bringing together shout out my boy j row he's just doing a lot of the guitar for the project and, and we've been doing a lot of live shows together so um so there's been, a couple other producers as well you've been taking this on the road too the this Oof. this song yeah man well we just started doing these this kind of music on the road and oh, so okay. seeing how that been especially like i'll start off rapping and then we'll be like but we're about to switch it up and do something different. And like, I do like sometimes like rap shows. So you got all these tough ass, like, and then here I go on stage, like <laughs> rocking out and they're like, yo, what the fuck is this shit? And then you've got the people who are like, yo, thank you. You hey, sign, finally something interesting. You know mm. what I'm saying? Cause hearing a bunch of dudes come on stage talking about, I'm surfing crack in the hood. I'm popping person. I'm good. I'm up to surfing some lean. These niggas know what's good. I'm like, <laughs> okay like that's cool maybe once yeah then when you have like five rappers come on like that it's like yeah yeah let's get some let's get some refreshing in here you know no i feel that man i feel that like it, there is sort of this trope that runs through some some types of hip-hop or, or rap that uh that you know it's been done so many fucking times and it's like eh, do we have to really hear about that again and again and again yeah. and and you know look like people who can bring it bring a new light to it and and have something a new angle to those subject that subject matter yeah. i i you know mad respect but for the most part when you know like when I, I remember when I was I was I've been in a couple hip hop like bands where it's like you know like a, a live setup like a Roots or something, and yeah. we would be playing it, it'd be the same situation we'd be playing these uh, we'd be playing like these hardcore rap shows where people yeah. are like talking shit to each other off stage like <laughs> like hating on the other dude you know like saying this is trash or whatever sounds familiar bro and then you get up there with your band and it's it's something different and, and yeah. uh you know it does garner uh some respect in some matters yeah. but um yeah. you know it, it's just it, yeah i feel like hip-hop is one of those uh genres that that can um get stale really easily and and it oh, needs yeah. to be the, the the it needs to be pushed further and further and that's and that's why i still respect like kanye west and and and, and i mean on you know on a more widely accepted you know kendrick lamar is doing a great yeah. job at, at at pushing that that uh envelope yeah pushing the envelope you know working Keeping the roots of hip-hop alive right man. right right I understand it man i didn't want to end up a lyrical spiritual miracle individual in a swimming pool kind of rap like i didn't want to do that like i know <laughs> there's there's so many of them out there bro and like i there's a craft to it and if yeah. you're really good at being able to articulate your words and put them together in those combinations all the power to you mm. but there's a finite group of individuals who are able to do that in a creative manner that is actually interesting and attention engaging otherwise mm. you're just saying words and that's why i love to sing and do melodies yeah. because rappers i swear to god just say words i'll be listening and i'm like hoopa da boopa da doopa da koopa da <laughs> like these are just noises you're making you're just you you grabbed a rhyming dictionary <laughs> and you said cream seem dream deem fleem green mean like that's not like interesting you know storytelling uh creative wordplay uh great punch lines you yeah. know those are the things that make hip-hop yeah. great yeah. but then you've got anyone and I've, and I've been to enough cities with local rappers and i've seen it anyone thinks they can pick up a beat and just go like crazy on it and that just makes them like a rapper and mm. it's like yes 
And no, because yeah. there's rappers who actually like rap. Mm. And yeah. you don't want to be in a situation with those guys claiming that you're a rapper because you will get smoked <laughs> <laughs> lyrically, yeah. spiritually, individually, yeah. lyrically. Like, <laughs> it will be that situation. Yeah, man. No, no. Yeah. It, 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 it just, just seeing that. Uh, I mean, and. I, I don't, you know, like we were saying earlier, like I, I love, uh, like Snoop Dogg is a great example of a storyteller who could just like, you know, is captivating. It's like you want to hear what he has to say. And, and like, and I agree with you 100% where it's like, sometimes you hear people just rapping and it's just words to me. I'm paying more attention to the beat than I am to, yeah. to what you're saying because like I, I have no... It's not captivated. Like I don't. It doesn't make me want to hear what you're saying. Like really listen to what you're saying. Like I, I just zone out on like the the little beeps and blops and beats and shit. You know what I mean? Like I'm just. See, some rappers have better ad libs and they have lyrics. They're like, hey, yeah, turn up and those bitches be lit. I remember the ad libs, but then you like your actual verses. I don't remember. It. Like that's a problem. Yeah, I remember this. Pen, 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 pen. Making bird noises and shit. Hey, I love that shit though too. It's it's uh, there's a t there's a place for it all. But if you don't have anything to say, if you don't, if you're just saying the same shit that everybody's always heard, uh, that everyone's heard already, then w what the fuck are you even doing? Also, don't make a thousand songs that sound the same, right? Because, <laughs> like, you can do a really redundant flow on one song. Yeah. But trust me, it's noticeable when you do that same flow right. on 10 different songs and yeah. just try to mask it with a different beat. Right. Okay, I'm, guy. Like, just gonna, we I'm, see you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they just got one thing that they could do. The the one trick pony, as they say. Uh, yeah, there was this... Uh, there was this uh, uh, I, I'm not I'm not trying to change subject, but I, there was this interview that Snoop Dogg was doing, and the video kind of went viral. And it was I can't remember her name, but she was asking him, "Is like, do you think it's fucked up uh, that you know that the times have changed and and all the things that you've said over the years where you've disparaged women and you've you know you've said these terrible things about women and stuff? Do you do you feel like that you uh, do you feel bad about that or do you feel like you owe an apology?" And Snoop Dogg is like, fuck no. I'm fucking, because he owns his lyrics. He owns what yeah. he says. And, and yeah. maybe he doesn't talk in that manner anymore. But, you know, that was Snoop Dogg. That was who he was at the time. And so, like, I, I appreciate that he, he's just been this dude who's been consistent on how he feels about stuff mm -hmm. and who are not afraid to do what he wants to do. And that's yeah. what I respect more and more. Uh, in artists these days is, is yeah. if, if you're fucking, if you're just, you're kowtowing to, you're in pandering to this, this new generation, this new idea that you can't hurt feelings, you can't do, which I'm not against, you know, you know, being mindful about what you say and not being a piece of shit and fucking right. going out and there. Social and, certain sex, right. Certain sex, but, blah, but you know what I'm trying to say. I do, I do. But I, I but I do respect people who are who sort of stick by what they say. If you're gonna say it, if you have the balls to say it in the first place, and then on it. Yeah. This <laughs> is this is what you said. This is Eli Porter. Who's Eli Porter? Do you know who Eli Porter is? I'm not familiar. Who's Eli Porter? He did it. I don't know who Eli Porter is. How dare you crap my pants? Hold on. I love your name, by the way. Crap your pants. You have the <laughs> Eli Porter. Uh, okay, here he is. He, he's got some stuff going on. Eli Porter freestyle. If I if I if I put him on, is it gonna is it gonna get me uh, TOS? <laughs> is it uh, is it gonna violate terms of service? Is it like some Brother Lynn shit? Like, am I going to be fucking kicked off of Twitch because we played Eli Porter? Oh, let's hear some Eli Porter. I, just... yes, I have a problem with Scott, And I don't know what the fuck this is, bro. <laughs> this dude is awesome. wasted. Hold on. All right. Gosh. Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> this dude looks trash. Right. Let's go. I 
and I guarantee when I get it, she goes to the back. She hear about my name, Itala. I took her to my room and I broke off proper. Can we do one thing? Can we kick it like soccer? You know what it is, baby, bedroom knocker. I put you on the bed, she sucking on my head. I beat that pussy up to she Fully dead. Yep, yep, I'm dirty. Yep, yep, I'm hard. I'm an ace in the game. I mean, if you really freestyle here, I mean, you got to be like Yeah, he's not, he's not bad. He's doing his thing. He's doing his thing. Eli Porter. What? Uh, he's from Georgia. He gained success after a rap battle where he battle rapped Envy. Okay. Oh, and this is his battle rap with Envy. Look at these graphics, yo! <laughs> this is tight. Watch out. Hey there. It's me again, <laughs> your boy Marvel, and I'm back with Ryan. I love Tula this. Mike Freestyle Battle. We have two new contestants, sophomore <laughs> Rael and your boy Eli from Class of 2005. We also have the bus, Wait, Jonathan Hodges. I'm not trying to talk shit, but is, like, is Eli Porter like on the spectrum or something? Uh, crap my pants because he, he has this like weird eye thing that he's doing and I'm not again I'm not trying to okay okay so Eli okay so he he has he's a okay he's on the spectrum all right J Dub Jeremy Walker and Steven Jackson Action Jackson Action Jackson over over at the judges table y'all already know the rules I feel like this is right when YouTube started like gaining popularity and like he was just like yeah we're, we're gonna make a show or this was like uh, uh, okay. public access cable public access uh oh we gotta get ready for fire we gotta get ready for fire let's go so we ain't gonna waste no time on that it's um, not let's get into it look y'all will have 45 seconds please stop when I tell you or else you will be disqualified <laughs> all right let's get it going we're gonna start things off with your boy right here Envy let's go let's go Envy I'm ready Yo, uh-huh, it's your boy Envy, okay, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, yo, uh-huh, 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 yo. Yo, the words got you talking cripple. My advice to Eli is to start rapping, stick to walking cripple. Young cat freestyle so high. I've been up on the blocks, never selling rocks, but I still got what I got. I'm squad up like little Wheezy. Get busy off the flow so you can say I'm off the hazy. Anybody want it, they can get it. Never rap with a stutter. I'm so nice that I could have been marvelous, brother. Get me right on the platter. Rhymes fatter here and cats off. Average cat knocking them off. Never with the gas. I run up on strap they like right yo you need to stop talking junk but i gotta run up on a cat with the pump yeah Ooh. man oh okay okay hold on oh. we gotta we gotta we gotta pause for the cause <laughs> he why is it that his first two lines was straight after his handicap <laughs> <He was like, laughs> that's fucked up bro that's what, but hey, what, I guess anything goes in a rap battle, right? I don't know. <laughs> I she always was told you ain't supposed to talk about dead homies or family. Ah, uh, so so, but you could talk about their their uh, wait for physical, you physical physical well being. Yeah, yeah, maybe you, I think that that's pretty open. That's open. You there know, you go. If somebody got like wear glasses or got like a lazy, eye, you best believe like you could, could get called four eyes or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so I feel like being handicapped or like. Being in a wheelchair, you know, different. Like, you're bound to hear a vegetable joke, you know what I'm yeah. saying? You're in a rap battle. Like, right. you got to be ready for this shit. Man. But it's true. It's true. If you can't handle it, if the, if, the, if the kitchen's too hot, get out the kitchen, right? If, 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 it, yeah. you, can't, if you can't fucking take it, then you got to go. And, 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 and here's the thing. If we're given special, uh, special, um, uh, if, if, if the handicap is untouchable in these certain situations, then, uh, you know, like I feel like you're you're uh, you're marginalizing them even more because the yeah, the, sure. the one thing that uh, rap rules, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. But but like for real, like I feel like you're marginalizing them more because I don't know one handicapped person who wants to be treated like special treatment, who wants to yeah. be like catered to, like their babies, like they're less than. You know what I mean? They want to be treated like anybody else. 
So I yeah. feel like if you're good, if you're not gonna, you gotta go for it. <laughs> their handicap. If you're a rap battle, you better go for their handicap, y'all. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. All right, we we we'll, we got we're good. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna listen to uh, 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 Eli Porter's comeback verse, and uh, let, let's see what happens. Let's let's see how he takes this. Up next, we have Eli from the class of 2005. Okay, first of all, this host needs to learn how to host a fucking show because, like, I don't know. He's talking, like, this dude is talking like he's on the spectrum. So, I, I just, what, what's up, bro? Like, get your skills up. Let's go. Yeah, I got one question, man. Tell me who next. This nigga salt like a nigga who just getting the best. See, I'm the best, man. I did it. What the fuck you get us into, crap my pants? Huh? Okay. Thank you, right off. He thinking hard. Oh. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Here yeah. he goes, he's coming back, y'all. Yeah. See, I'm gonna let you know who the best by the hour. This is like Rosie O'Donnell at a bisexual bridal shower. It ain't nothing <laughs> in me, man. I keep it for real. Look at this dental man with dental the grill. See, I'm the best. I told you that. This dude like that, he ran in front of the cat. Now I messed up, but I'ma stay on top. They told me, man, but you know, I'm never gonna flop. Look at this dude, he need to stay in the shade. Ain't no wonder why he came out. He already in the gay parade. I told you, man, I got you. <laughs> Roast it like ever. Yo. You don't know Yo. my rhymes. They straight up clever. So you step down off the pedestal. I'm the best, man. You need to go to the fucking day toe. They put a heart around his head. They got a heart around him. What the fuck is happening? What the fuck is this? Right. Grab my pants. What the fuck did you get us into? What in the fuck did you get us into? Grab my pants. Oh, okay. First of all, <clears throat> that was amazing. Second of all, it's not amazing for the content of what he was saying, but that was just amazing in general. <laughs> <laughs> so that was... Oh, that was hard. That was hard. Morby is Morby's out. Morby is all the way out, y'all. <laughs> Morby oh, is taking a seat. Right, crap my That's all you got? Crap my pants and some dancing cats? <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> okay. All right. So, anyways. Uh, uh, what, what, what's your take on that, Nightheart? What, what, what would you like to add to that before we move on? <laughs> I only have one word for that, man. That was bars. <laughs> That's it. Bars. Oh, shit. In the street, they call it murder. <sighs> I spiritually resonated with the second dude. I've been there a couple of times in a freestyle cypher where it's like, yeah, yeah, let's go. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> What do I say? <laughs> like, I've been there. <laughs> He's like, look, I get it. You sometimes you get up in these situations and you're a little bit over, in over your head, and you're like, or All you right. don't want to say some wild shit on accident, bro. Yeah, you don't want to say some stupid shit. Be like, what did I just say? And everyone's looking at you like, what just came out of your mouth, bro? <laughs> I thought you were, I thought you were called K rap for Korean rap before. I don't, all right. I don't. Oh, K rap. Okay. Well, we're going to call you K rap then. K, oh, K rap. Yeah. No, it, 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 it's definitely crap my pants. Uh, K rap my pants. K rap yeah. my pants. <laughs> Korean rap. Anyways, uh, thank you, K rap. He's the best man. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's hard to switch into this next thing because I I, I do want to talk about because you mentioned that uh, that you were uh, that you were coming from a place of darkness in in the yeah. making of this new 
uh, this new album. Uh, what I mean, like, I don't want you to feel like you have to tell us your deepest, darkest secrets or anything. But, you know, like what 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 was the vibe you're coming out of? Like what you said, darkness, that's a very general term. Is that were you like really, you know, were you really going through some dark times? I mean, can you can you expound on that a bit? Well, to put it simply, I hated myself. Oh, wow. um, I didn't realize why. I didn't realize what self-hatred was. I didn't realize what self-love was, mm. you know. I didn't realize that a lot of the misery and depression and things that I experienced in my life were set upon by me um, through either my actions or my lack thereof of action in preventing things in my life from triggering me into these states. And so, like, for a long time, I was just, I felt like I was, like, a wound that was never covered by a Band-Aid, just this exposed wound that was just picking up gunk and getting infected and just an unhealed person, you know? And it took me a while, and I'm still in the process, don't get me wrong, it's an everyday thing, but, you know, it took me a while to realize for myself that I deserve love, number one, and that the love I deserved, I had to invest and allocate to myself and that it's in that's in little things. Like sometimes it's in telling someone no and asserting those boundaries. It's in taking the time to yourself to breathe and having hobbies or releases that you can go to in moments of stress. These little things that I wasn't equipping myself with or uh, even acknowledging certain things, like certain things I was eating at me that I would just like put on the shelf and be like, yeah, like I'm gonna let it sit here. And it was just all consuming me to a point of suicide, a point of isolation, to the point of just general manic depression. And I feel like when you reach that rock bottom, the only place you can go up is up from there, as long as you don't go any further down, you know. Yeah. And I just started to rebuild myself and take those intervals of time to just care for me, love me, isolate myself from emotional and energy vampires and just allow myself to live life for me, you know, because for a long time, I thought the only purpose I had in life was to do this music and to be this person. And it robbed me of my joy. It robbed me of my value. And I just have been trying to be me no matter who I'm around, no matter where I'm at, no matter what, who people think I am. If you think I'm night hard on this cool lit ass rapper artist or whatever, that's cool. You can think that but I'm still going to be the goofy, silly, whatever person that I'm, I am right now, regardless of who you think I should be. Instead of trying to pretend or to mask to please you or make you more comfortable with who you think I am, I'm going to just be me and fuck if that makes you uncomfortable. And that's been what's helped me get out of that pit of like people pleasing and just submitting to other people's projections of me and just giving a fuck. Like I gave too much of a fuck and I cared. So it allowed me to carry way too much, carry other people's opinions of me that didn't matter. I carry things from the past that were still eating at me that I didn't let go of. I, I just cared too much. And now that I've stopped caring, and just genuinely stop giving a fuck about people, places, things, and situations, I am way more peaceful and has given me enough clarity to do the things I want to do for me. And that album is one of those things that I decided to do for me, but it's become a whole life thing where fuck what you think, fuck what you think I should do, fuck your opinion, and fuck whether or not you're going to come along. This is my thing that I'm going to do. This is my journey. This is what I have in store for me. And I'm going to do it. And that's been the confidence of that and the assurance of that has kept me farther away from the darkness. You know, I still deal with it quite frequently. Battles with my roommates in my head and having to go back and forth with all these different emotions and feelings. But I will say, I'm not living in the darkness anymore. It might come to visit. It might knock on my door and say, hey, I got some apple pie for you. I'm like, mm. but it's not staying in my house anymore. And I'm not squatting in its house anymore. Like, yeah. I'm done with it. So, yeah, that that that's that's some uh, that's some powerful shit, man. And, and more. Thanks, says, bro. Uh, I want I want either Nightheart's therapist or him as mine. 
<laughs> Morby, yeah. yeah, no, no, that's uh, that's a uh, that's that's powerful, man. That's a powerful thing to 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 recognize, you know. Like, yeah. I think it, it took me a really long time to figure that shit out too, man. And and again, it is a day to day thing, and it is yeah. something that you struggle with all the time. If, yeah. if especially if you're depressive and. Uh, you, you know, we, again, you battling with those roommates, man. Like today was one of those days for me, you know, like it was just, it yeah. just, uh, but, but, but I was realizing before I went live here is like, you know, I've did this to myself all day. It wasn't yeah. anybody else really, you know, there are some external forces at play here, but there, but it right. really was me just sort of fixating on these, these stupid mm-hmm. ideas and, and, and bringing yeah. myself down. So it was like, you know, like you really do have to, you got, you got to do the work, man. It's, it's not yeah, something bro. that's just passive. It's, it's not something you could just sit there and be like, well, I hope this stops. It's like, man, you really got to confront some shit. You really got to mm-hmm. take the steps to, to not think of it. Is there anything that you like, was there any tools? Is there tools that you use to sort of, you know, stay out of, to not squat in the, in the, in those, in those dark places? Well, you know, um, Sound. This is gonna sound corny, of course, but you know, meditation and finding those spaces to be without. See, uh, we we all have programming. You know, we all have programming based upon how we grow up, based upon our environment, based upon a lot of things. You know, and we create these perceptions, these projections, these programmings, and you know, they're strong, they're powerful, they help us create our reality, and it's a great thing. But on the other hand, sometimes they can be cages and traps for us in our thought processes and the way we perceive reality and the way we perceive ourselves. And so finding those spaces where you can really challenge your own belief system, uh, like constantly challenging yourself and not looking at your own belief system or way of looking at life as the concrete way, like this is what life is. I have to remind myself all the time. Like I travel for gigs, but I haven't seen a lot of the world. And then I'm, I look around Toledo and this is just like a metaphor, but I look around Toledo, the city I'm in and I'm like, wow, this is life. This is all there is. And it's like, actually, no, there's a thousand places, thousand culture, thousand people. Like there's so much more. And so breaking that your own lens of kind of like the way you perceive the world has been like, a tool of you just kind of like breaking away from what I think is the right way to live life because I have my own opinions and projection of what the right way to live life for me and other people will come in and be like well you should go to school and you should do this and you should be vegan and you should be left wing and all this different shit and it's like how what is my actual opinion about anything you know, what do I actually feel? And so creating that space so you can hear that and feel that within yourself. So when you come to bat and come to play, you're like, okay, yeah, this is what I actually feel, think, believe, so-and-so. Because you become a sheep otherwise and, and you become a drone and you end up just living life on autopilot until you are able to like break that. And it's not a instant thing. It's an everyday looking at your life and challenging yourself. You know, there are people who look completely different than me, who are way older than me, who have completely different lifestyles than me. And I still try to like gain things from them because they have life experience and insight and value. And it could be the one thing, like for me, it would be like an older white guy or older white lady. It could say to me, you know, you wouldn't think, that they would know the relevance of what it's like to be an African-American man in America or my experience being a hip hop musician or artist or anything, but it could just be a life gem that they give me that could just change my perspective. But if I'm looking at it from a limiting belief and I'm looking at it from a situation of you have nothing to offer me, then I'll never receive that. So it's kind of just being open to receiving insight from any angle and not being closed off to that. And that's what's helped me because I was homeless for a while. I love my mom, but she wasn't always present at times. And I haven't had a mentor and I've never had anyone older in my life who was like taking me under their wing. And so I've had to extract insight from a bunch of different angles and kind of filter it all out and say, okay, 
this is what I'm going to extract from this situation. This is what I'm going to learn from this situation. This is what I'm going to learn from this situation. And it's being exposed to a bunch of craziness definitely impacted my perception, but also freed me because I, I don't look at life from one angle. I've lived with so many different families in my journey and I have so many different fans who are come from different places who I don't know personally with completely different belief systems. And the only way I'm able to really truly do that and, and, and connect with people is by freeing myself of though that that pre-existing programming because if I was looking at life from the angle of a, a poor kid who grew up homeless in Toledo, Ohio the whole time, then I would be limited by the amount of people I can connect with and the amount I can actually learn from the world that I live in. Yeah, man. No, that 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 mentality gets you trapped. It gets you trapped a lot. And it's uh and you see it, it, it I feel like people are, are, are living in that uh, on a large scale right now. Um, there are just so many people who are, are sort of like they only live to relive their trauma or they, they hold on to that. They hold on to their oppression. You know, they hold on to that. It's like, yes, we understand there are there. There's an oppressive nature to this to this country. Uh, but are you going to live in that? Are you going to be the 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 consummate victim, the or victim. Yeah. Are, are you going to move beyond that and, and be the ruler of your destiny because thinking that your your victimhood is your whole life is, is well that is your whole life then you know yeah. thinking that you're you you know like a you poor black kid from Toledo, ohio who's homeless and shit it's like that's all i am and it's all their fault and it's all his fault and it's like exactly. that person's fault and like uh, it, 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 it's a trap. It's a fucking yeah, trap. It and and it's another way to fucking isolate people or, or to control people. It's another way to divide people. Mm -hmm. It's another it's systematic, bro. It's it systematic, is. bro. It is. There's like thousands of me's out there who have experienced very similar fates. And unfortunately, there's a percentage of them who never were able to make it out, whether it was through art or music like me or through academics or school or through a trade of some sort, like it's systematic and it is a trap. And unfortunately, you know, I'm glad that there are some support systems out there, but unfortunately there really isn't a overarching safety net for a lot of these youths to fall into, yeah. you know? And so um, it becomes then a cycle, you yeah. know? And, um, it's unfortunate, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful that despite, you know, me being exposed to a lot and still observing a lot, that not only have I been able to escape that trap, but also help ins inspire and influence others to kind of inch away from those traps. Because on that way out, uh, and it's not even a way out physically, the way out mentally of that cage that we put ourselves in of what we're even capable of, you know, because... Bro, I don't have the hugest platform and I haven't done the craziest shit, but there are people out there who look at my accolades and my accomplishments like, how is that possible? Like, how did you do that? You know, and I'm grateful that I'm able to continue doing this because I'm able to show people, especially from the area I'm in, like, yo, it's possible to come from these like very trap like just life altering circumstances, those make it or break it circumstances and still make it. Like you don't have to be this broken victim. And trust me, like I've being a victim has been something that I've battled with for a long time. And, and victimizing myself has been something I've battled with with a long time. But once you're able to, to flip that, you realize you have superpower, right? You have this superpower called accountability, self accountability. Right. And it's an unfortunate thing. But truthfully, everyone's a victim, a victim of circumstance. I don't know a single person who hasn't been a victim of circumstance, a car accident, uh, an assault, uh, 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 a mental, a toxic relationship. Like 
we're all victims of circumstances. We all go through something tra traumatic at some point in the experience. Even we're animals, bro. I don't know a single fucking animal out there who doesn't go through something traumatic in their life. It could be a cute fucking sloth, but you best bet at one point they saw that fucking eagle in the sky and their heart was beating out their chest like, oh shit, I'm about to be a meal today. Yeah. So it's like, yo, we all go through those things and it's about how we internalize them and what we decide to do with it. And I've used my art as, as a superpower I've used it as a crutch. I've used it as a weapon. I've used it as a tool. And it's all been because of this pain and this trauma and this victim that I've created. As much as Nightheart is a, is this uh, superhero icon kind of persona that's supposed to inspire, as much of the Nightheart has been a victim, right? It just I was just able to turn my victimization into something more powerful than that. But it's not always that easy or that direct like writing a song making a rap song is like gonna be it because i've made hundreds of songs i mean hundreds of songs but just a couple months ago if you were to talk to me bro i was ready to jump off a fucking bridge mm -hmm. so it doesn't also matter how much you internalize and express your art if you're still not actually healing all you're doing is spreading your pain outward and that could be a beautiful thing but then when you look at it you're still in the pain, you're still broken, and now all you're doing is sharing your pain now. So what's really the, like, solution? Like, what are you actually, like, doing? And that's why I had to kind of take that step to heal for myself, but also for my art, because I don't want my legacy of my art to be this shadow of my darkest experiences and my pain and my heartbreak, because what kind of impression does that leave on my fans who are suffering from depression suicide heartbreak like that's it for them like this is like that emotion they're living in is going to be that for them like no like i can't have that be it you know so it's been a i have to walk it so that i can talk it because if i'm just talking my shit saying all this bullshit and then people find out in the wash or the rinse that i'm like this completely different person who has it's it's not going to work and so to heal to heal through my music I also have to heal myself you know yeah yeah well said man well said does that's, that's thank you bro i mean that that's that yeah man yeah that that makes a lot of sense and i mean i can't you know you know i i can't imagine what it's like to be you obviously you're you and you're but I, but i know what it's i know what it's like to be in those dark places and to have to like lift yourself up and there are and it is unfortunate that there's you know entire fucking you know swaths entire swaths of this country entire neighborhoods who are sort of trapped in this mentality you know what i mean the dark like, clouds the dark, dark cloud clouds. that's and and it's just it, where do they look to it's like that idea of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps is like yeah there is some truth to that but then there is like there's also this idea is like if you don't even have a ground to stand out how are you pulling your fucking bootstraps up man it's like that doesn't yeah. even make sense it's like there has to be something and, and yeah, you addressed it. It's unfortunate that there's not this overarching, you know, safety net for, for people who, for kids, especially young people yeah. to sort of figure that shit out. And, um, and it, it, it's tough, man. It's tough. The first album by Kid Cudi talks about his darkness, but it was his best album. Not all dark, but some songs. He was like, he was spreading light through his darkness though. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though it wasn't like had darkness in it, like at least from my my experience mm -hmm. with it, it was like you're able to find still so much relatability, and in that relatability, you found like hope mm -hmm. because you didn't feel alone or felt like you know these these emotions you were dealing with were like taboo. So mm -hmm. even though that it was dark in certain areas, I feel like it, it was it was through the darkness that the light was in the album, you know. Mm -hmm. That's that's my the way I look at it. Yeah, yeah, totally, man, totally. And and moving Dutchman, how dare you? How dare you come in here with your jokes? Uh, well, we're we're talking serious right now, moving Dutchman. Uh, Why it's grease lightning? <laughs> <laughs> Why it's grease lightning? Uh, okay, should we listen to another song and then wrap up? Yeah, let's uh do. What we got? Hybrid. We got hybrid. Oh, we... Uh, uh, lost my mind. Hybrid. 
and Psych Ward, but we just listen to Psych uh, Ward. We right? do Lost My Mind, yeah. All right, we're gonna listen to another song, and we're gonna come back, and then we're gonna and we're gonna wrap up uh, with Nightheart. So let's let's jump into this song. Uh, wait, so what'd you say? Which one? Yeah, this one's called uh, End of the World. End of the yeah. World, and it's Lost My Mind, though? Yeah, that's, the, that's what the beat's called. Okay, yeah. okay. So this is End of the World, y'all. Let's get into it. I see the clock keeps turning It goes round and round and round I see the world keeps burning I'm watching cities burning down Mama said, don't play with fire Or you might get burned I keep hurting myself Guess I never learn Can you see it? I mean, it's it's good stuff, man. It's really Appreciate cool. It, bro. Well, I mean, it's it's just really cool to see your evolution, and it, it's it's really fun to me that I've like known you for a long enough time to see that you know, like just you know, you coming on the show over the years and and yeah. what you uh, you know what you've been doing, and I, I just I really dig it, man. I really dig it. Reminds me of old Scream Core stuff. Uh, my twelve. Hey. My 12 year old self is loving it. Ha ha ha. That's what's up, though. I love it. Yeah. yeah and thank again, you guys. And again, everybody, make sure you're out there following uh, uh, Nightheart here. And uh, I'm dropping the link to his, uh, it's his, uh, I don't know what it's called. It's AMAP, but I'm just calling it the link yeah. tree thing. It's, it's it's like his link tree. So go and check yep. out his his music. Go check out, go follow him on social media. Go do all that stuff. On, and if you're listening on the audio end, make sure that you go in the show notes and, and click around and support your boy because uh, 
you know, Nightheart's out here doing things, man, doing it big, and I appreciate, appreciate you. It, and uh, you know, like I know he touched on it a little bit, but he, but we're 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 in the same city right now, y'all. Like this is a, a local artist here to Toledo, and yeah. I always got to make sure I support my local homies here because. Uh, we gotta we, we we gotta lift this cut. I mean, and, and you know, like I, I know you. It, it it's interesting when you're saying you know like being poor in Toledo and just being like that could be because I've been there. You know, like we we share yeah, that bro. same experience of being young angsty yeah. kids who are like just yeah. getting trapped in these in bro. this little fucking this little town. No. Uh, collab soon, maybe you never know, Morby. You never know, you never know. Yeah, let's go. Hit me on the back end. Yeah, let's go, let's go. Uh, but yeah, man, it's a this town can be a trap in its own. I, I think any town can, but like especially Toledo because it's one of those cities that's like just big enough to be a city. Oh shit, let's go. Uh, it's just big enough to be a a, a a real city, quote unquote, but small enough to feel like what the fuck? What is there to even do? You know? Seriously, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there there's a there there is a reason that you know a lot of uh you know a lot of metal comes out of this town. You know, a lot of a lot of heavy music, and I feel like there's yeah. just a lot of angst and. Cause it's, I mean, man, it, it it it's still a small city, man. It's just yeah, it is, bro. It it just it's just monotonous this this time. But uh, I I've been able, I I really can relate to what you're saying. Is like you know that there's other places. You've been more places. You've been around, so you know what's out there. And it's not just this. There's more to the world than this. And uh, especially me coming back from California, you know, for so many years, it was just like, fuck, dude. I, I, when I first landed back here, I was like, what the? Oh, I can imagine. Fuck. Culture shock. Am I <laughs> doing back in this fucking shithole? But uh, I've really come to appreciate, um, uh, as I'm getting older, I've appreciated that it, it can be quiet here and it can be, you know, it's not a bad place to raise a son. And it's right, like, absolutely. you know, because we travel a lot. So he knows that there's more than just this more. place. But it's Beautiful. like, but it's like, uh, it's just, man, it, this town can be, it can be such a pit. So uh, I'm really okay. happy to see you sort of rising above that. And, Appreciate it, man. And doing you, man. And uh, taking again, it one day at a time, bro. You got to, man. You got to. Fucking keep it up, bro. Uh, it's Catch 22. It's going to be out sometime in August, everybody. Make sure that you are following and make sure.